Hello, it's Lily. Today I'd like to do a review video on Code Realize Guardian of Rebirth. Um, this is a game that has already been localised, it's available in English. Uh, you can play it on the Switch, the PS Vita and I believe the PlayStation 4. The one that I played is on the Switch. Um, I believe it's quite a popular title in the West, like whenever I hear of Otome games in sort of like in the western side of the world, it's always Code Realize or Call and Malice. So Code Realize is a title that often pops up, um, which is why I thought this review would be quite good for those who are looking into getting into like the Otome game um, stuff because it's definitely a good title for beginners to kind of get into the franchise of. Um, which which makes me kind of continue on and say that I'm going to make this review as kind of like unbiased as possible so it's objective so I will mention like pros and cons of the game like what I do recommend and what I don't um but however just because I say something that isn't is like negative about the game does not mean that I don't like it. I'm aware there's loads of fans out there and I don't want them to think oh my god Luli's insulting uh, my favorite game so I just thought I throw it out there that if I do say anything like negative, it's because I'm trying to make it as kind of objective and equal as possible. And also remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content of this little video. Uh, it actually really helps me out kind of decide what I'm going to make next. So um, I really appreciate it. And uh, lastly, I just want to say that I don't think anything I include in this video would be considered a spoiler content. However, I am aware that there are a lot of people out there who are quite sensitive. Um, note that I will be including things that you'd find on the website and then maybe like my opinions in regards to some of the characters. But I do tend to avoid anything that will kind of spoil the story or like the key things about the characters, you know. So. Um, However, if you would like to literally know nothing about the game, then I would suggest you moving on. But anyway, let me start. So I'm going to quickly go through like the contents of what I'm going to talk about today. So firstly, I'll go through the synopsis, then I'll go through each of the characters, then I'll give you like my general opinion of the game overall. I'll go through sort of like what I do and like who I do and don't recommend the game to and finally like a conclusion so like what rating I would give it out of five. But anyway, so to start with the synopsis is about this girl called Cardia. Um, it's kind of based in like what's supposed to be Victorian steampunk London. It's, it's, it's quite interesting actually. And the whole story stems around the fact that Cardia is poisonous which I'm aware it sounds a little bit odd, but basically she is she wakes up in this house and realizes that she's poisonous, so she's got like special gloves and stuff because if she touches anything, it's like acid, it just kind of burns and crumbles. And it kind of starts with sort of the English government kind of looking for her, and then Lupin, the main cat kind of main love interest comes and swoops her away and rescues her and it's all about her story and how she finds out who she is and why she's poisonous and um, it's it's quite it's quite emotional in parts and I personally saw it as a very nice fairy story almost like if there were a fairy tale then I think it would be like a very good fairy tale and when you look at it like that it's a really fun game there are five uh, love interests, so you've got um, Lupin, which is the main one, you can only play him after you've played all the other four. You have got, oh, and he's a phantom thief type person, so he'll be wearing a mask and, you know, like Lupin, um, I think everyone knows who he is, <laughs> in like a, in sort of not this game, but in a fictional character sort of way. You have got MP Barbicane, um, he's very much like trying to be... He's like an engineer, I think. Yeah, I think that's the easiest way to kind of quickly give an explanation of who he is. Then you have Van Helsing. Hel Van Helsing. Um, as you can, as you probably guessed, he's uh, he's like a vampire hunter kind of character, and he's kind of considered incredibly strong. Then you have uh, Vincent um, Frankenstein. He's he's. I really like him. As you can probably tell from my facial expression, he's adorable and he's a scientist. Well, I say scientist, he's an alchemist. Uh, in my mind, he was just a scientist and a doctor, but you know, we, we pedantics, whatever. 
Then you've got um, Saint Germain. Uh, he's, I don't know how to explain him. I guess he's like an aristocrat, I guess. He's he's rich, basically. <laughs> that's, that's kind of like his, his person. But anyway, the order in which I went through the game was, I went through Impy Barbican. I played, I then played uh, Van Helsing. Then I played Vincent Frankenstein, Saint Germain, and then I played uh, Lupin. So, well, Arsene Lupin, that's his full name, because I know he's the only one that, for some reason, I just said his last name. <laughs> but anyway, so let me start with the description of Impy Barbicane. Impy was an interesting one. So right from the start, I wasn't too keen on him, and I feel like a lot of people have this opinion about him. He's like kind of the joker, he's always flirting with cardio right from the start he's always joking that you know he's like she's his beloved <laughs> and everyone makes fun of him he's he's the kind of joker that everyone kind of pretends he didn't say anything you know I do feel quite sorry for him right from the start but he can be a little bit irritating and uh yeah so to start with I wasn't I wasn't a huge fan but as you play the route you realize He's incredibly smart and reliable and right at the end I was kind of like oh my gosh you know in real life I would literally I would really consider him boyfriend material he's smart he's reliable and yeah he jokes around a little bit but it kind of gets better and um, yeah his his story I actually you know cried for a part of it and um, yeah the best way to say or well, talk about him is that he's very surprising and um, he has this like dream of reaching the moon or whatever the reason why I threw that in is because you kind of know from the start and I think although everyone kind of makes fun of him and you know pretends that he doesn't say the silly things he does especially Lupin really um, relies on him in many ways and you will realize that the things he does throughout the story he's if it wasn't for him, they'd be screwed sometimes and you will see that happening with all the characters But with him, I kind of noticed it more probably because in the beginning I was kind of like, oh, why is he here? He's so annoying <laughs> But yeah, that's 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 um, Impy. He's annoying, but then towards the end at least for me. I kind of thought Wow, I've I've you know, I have a different opinion of you now Anyway, moving on, the next one, Van Helsing. Wow, his story was very, very action-packed, uh, shall we say. The reason why I say this is, like, so much gunfire, so much, like, craziness going on, um, that I literally thought, did he accidentally wander into the world of Code Realize from Pio Fiore? Because, like, he was... His, his story was crazy and I must say that if you really enjoyed Van, Van Helsing then you may actually really enjoy Pio Fiore because um, there are some elements, the action-packed side of it being very, uh, very, very similar in my opinion. Um, personality wise he is always quite he's a cool one you know um, right from the start he's a very calm, collected um, but I think I found the route a little bit frustrating in the sense that I really enjoyed it, but like, he's always pushing cardio away, you know, like you're saying, oh, why stop, she just wants to get to know you, why are you pushing her away, and it's really frustrating watching that, but, um, you know, as you go through the route, you kind of get to know him, and uh, if it wasn't for that, I don't think it would make sense, and um, yeah, he's, he's a really cool character. So if you like the kind of cool and collected, serious type of characters with like a route with full of action, um, then yeah, I think you'd really like Van Helsing. And I must admit, normally I don't find the whole heroine being uh, rescued by love interest thing, which happens in like every Otome game. Um, but with him, when he comes, came to the rescue, I was like, you stole my heart just for this brief moment. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he was he was he was very cool. And then there was Victor Frankenstein. Victor, he's <laughs> he was probably one of the most adorable characters that I've ever come across. Um, yeah, normally I don't go for the cute ones um, because they're just not really my type. Uh, but Victor was an exception. I think it's because throughout the whole thing, he's so sweet to Cardia. He's always trying to help her, protect her. 
and he's just really cuddly and some people have described him as a cinnamon roll now i don't really understand what that means i'm guessing it means he's like sweet and cute and fluffy <laughs> but uh yeah he's definitely i've heard a couple of people say that he's uh their favorite and i think it's because of how sweet he is i would really consider him as boyfriend material <laughs> oh he's just so cute <laughs> You can probably tell that I'm like super hyped thinking about him as a character, um, but yeah, he's just really cute. And his route is really interesting because he's an alchemist, so you kind of get to know about Cardia. I personally thought that Cardia and, and him made kind of were sort of more destined to be together, at least in my mind, more so than Lupin, which is really interesting because usually it's the, the poster boy that is kind of like. The best match if you know what i mean i still thought they're cute but i really thought victor and the mate and cardia really sort of they were meant to be together and you'll know what i mean if you've played it or are going to play it and um another thing that i must note is that there were two sub characters that appeared in victor's route where i thought like no sub character has ever made me cry and feel so emotional before I was really surprised. I was actually like crying more because of these two sub characters than I was like all the other <laughs> all the other routes. It was insane, and I yeah, it was it was just really sweet. And I have never felt that way about two sub characters before. So I would literally recommend this route um, for that as well as the fact that Victor's adorable and his route is really fun because you know you discover different elements of um, Cardia. So that's Victor, and I would really recommend him, and I, hopefully he becomes a favourite as well. <laughs> now Saint Germain, so he's the fourth one I played. So when I first saw the characters, Saint Germain was my favourite. So I like, I was looking through the you know story and everything, and I was really looking forward to playing Saint Germain because. I don't know, right from the start he's very elegant, he's very mysterious, and I love mysterious characters because you know you're going to be surprised at some point. Um, and yeah, so he was my favourite, but after I completed his route, I think he kind of, um, yeah, he was no longer my favourite. Don't get me wrong, I thought his route was like one of the most emotional, it's definitely the one that made me maybe cry the most. Um, for some reason, I may be insulting Shakespeare by saying this, but there were moments in it where I was like, oh my gosh, this reminds me of like a Shakespeare love story. Um, but yeah, no, uh, his, his route was very solemn, very, very emotional. And um, But you'd, you'd be surprised at how things went down. There's a lot about him that you kind of gradually find out about, and it's it's very surprising, it's very... I really liked it but as a character I liked how he was to start with and then at the end I didn't like him as much if that makes sense so although I still liked him he wasn't you know my top character and I think the main reason is because the rate at which he falls in love with Cardia is like unreal I found it really hard to relate because you know falling in love with someone with someone is at least I have found is a very slow process um, you might like initially have that crush and that lust but the things he does for Cardia um, is the kind of thing that you would do for someone who you've loved for like years or even yeah for years I would say <laughs> so um, the fact that that happens so soon I kind of couldn't help but feel mm, I think that was a bit too soon and um, that's the reason why I could not take his route that seriously but it was still a good route, don't get me wrong, it's just that one little thing that bothered me a little bit. The fifth route was Arsène Lupin. He's, um, so his route is very much kind of tying all the other routes together, so you find out more about Cardia, her life, why she came to be this poisonous person that she is, and um, so in that sense I really enjoyed his route. 
Um, I don't think I found his uh, character as emotional, I don't think. It was more like kind of learning about what happened and I really enjoyed it in that sense. Um, Arsene Lupin was always my favourite looks wise and he's very like confident and keeps on moving forward and very positive thinking and it's nice to have a character like that especially in an emotional world like uh, Code Realize where you think things are a little bit depressing at times and then having that um, positive forward thinking leader like character like Arsene Lupin really helps and I like his interaction with um, Impy as well it's kind of like looking at a kind of comedy thing going on where there's like they seem like a good duo let's put it that way um, so yeah in that sense I really enjoyed Lupin and I mean that's always the case for me I often like the last character not the most necessarily but I like I find that route the most entertaining because it tends to tie everything together um, at the end so yeah that's that's kind of Lupin in a nutshell if you like the confident I call them basic character types you know because he's like a hero or a prince that comes to rescue all the time like if that's the kind of guy you like then I think yeah he's he's definitely the guy for you so I'm moving on to like a general overview um I the thing I liked about Code Realize was that it's it, it's nice in like a fairy tale kind of way. So right from the beginning, you're kind of thrown this, I don't know, this question in your mind, like why is Cardia the way she is? And throughout the whole thing, you gradually learn about who she is, why she's ended up that way, like things that happened to her right between when she, you know, woke up and when she meets Lupin, like, things have happened to her where you think it makes sense why she ended up the way she is and, um, like, personality-wise, not necessarily poison-wise. And why she's so, like, emotionless to start with. She's very doll-like. Um, and then as the story goes on and she finds out more about herself, she spends more time with everyone, she becomes more and more human-like. And I think... A lot of people may like her as a main character also because she's not like just a girl that gets protected all the time. She learns different things from each of the characters right at the start and throughout the whole way really. And she puts these things into use and um, I, I'm quite fond of main characters that can sort of like protect themselves, think for themselves, actually come in handy and help the other characters. I think that's a, that's a nice thing. So I like the main character as well, and the, with that combined with the pretty fairy-like story, I thought was great. I also really like the sub-characters, so all the characters that appear that, you know, aren't necessarily part of the main story, but like, are part of each different route. Um, my favourite was probably... Probably, you know what, I think my favourite is the general, so <laughs> he's so loyal, you know, like... He's this, he's this guy with this like moustache <laughs> and he's initially he's kind of like trying to get um, Cardia, this is what happens right at the beginning before Lupin uh, saves her, he's like a general, but he's so courteous like when he sees um, Cardia, initially he's thinking like she's a monster or something but he sees her and then goes oh she's a lady, I've got to treat her like a gentleman and it's interesting because throughout the whole thing she may be in like trouble and she might you know they may want to capture her or whatever but whenever he interacts with her he would be so gentlemanly and courteous like he wouldn't treat her like a piece of crap you know <laughs> he'd treat her like a lady and I really had respect for that because you know in a couple of routes he is the enemy and yet you can't hate him because he's 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 yeah very loyal to the queen that's the best way to put it there's also a guy called Herlock Sholmes, uh, I believe, well as soon as you saw the name you can tell that he's like supposed to be Sherlock Holmes or something and he's a detective and uh, he's an interesting character. I found him frustrating because he'd keep on, you know, outsmarting Lupin at times, I mean the reverse happens too but um, so I'd be frustrating because I'd be rooting for Lupin and then Herlock Jones would be like, well, actually, I already figured out that you're going to do that. And it's like, for goodness sake, you're making Lupin seem not cool. <laughs> so um, in that sense, I found him frustrating. But he he was a really good character and um, had depth. You know, it's not like those games where they just throw random 
sub-characters for the sake of it. They all had their own personalities, their own stories, which you would discover throughout each of the different routes. And so in that sense, it was good too. Um, if there's things that I wasn't so sure about, it was kind of things that I like. So when someone says Victorian London, I was imagining, well, London in the Victorian times, you know, but if you're looking for historical accuracy, let's just say don't don't play this game <laughs> because there is no real historical accuracy. Don't get me wrong, like things that you would find in London appear and, you know, like Buckingham Palace or um, the, the Tower Bridge or, you know, things like that you would come across, but like... The way the Queen dresses is most certainly not um, Victorian time uh, dress, let's put it that way. When Queen Victoria appeared, I was imagining, you know, like Queen Victoria, but Queen Victoria was not Queen Victoria, she was a very sexy lady, let's, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> But I thought she was, um, I really, really liked Victoria as well. She was a very strong woman. Um, she had her own uh, aims. She really cared about uh, England as a country. And um, she was she was very strong. She was your stereotypical independent, strong woman who I would kind of almost respect and admire to be. So um, yet again, another solid sub-character. Um, which is funny because I was talking about things I wasn't too keen on and I've suddenly insert the fact that I like the game because of XYZ <laughs> so you can tell it's a good game. Um, another thing that I wasn't too keen on was the fact that there wasn't... it's not that there wasn't that much romance in it, there was romance in it, it's just obviously Cardi is poisonous so you're not gonna get any like kiss scenes or whatever. Um, well not really so there's romance there but like I felt like it wasn't quite enough for me um, which is why there is a fan disc, there is two fan discs actually, a fan disc is like either sequel or like bonus stories for games that were really popular and I feel that once I play the fan disc my opinion of this game is going to rise, a uh, reason being that this game was similar to Cafe Enchanté in the sense that there are issues, there are things that happen and the main character and the love interest you know go through it and then they live either happily ever after or not and it gets to the end um but then like it stops obviously because you know you've gone through the story which means there isn't that much romance like they finally discover that they love each other or whatever at the end and then you don't get to see kind of what happens afterwards so i really felt a bit like oh this is so cute this is cute oh oh it's over <laughs> you know like you don't get to see them as a couple like properly and um which is why i think i will buy the fan disc the fd um because i think yeah i think it would be really good because you will it's one of those where you finally get to see uh, cardia and her love interest um interact as a couple as two people who love each other and so in that sense i would yeah, I think it's good to buy the fan disc, but if you don't want to buy the fan disc and you just want like the main game and then for there to be lots of romance, it may not be kind of satisfying, at least I would feel that way because as I said, the romance is there, it's just not like in a passionate way or it's not like deep like you would find in Pure Fiordo for example, it's kind of similar to the level of Café Enchanté I would say. So um, yeah, very mild and it's still sweet, don't get me wrong, but I would definitely say that you're playing the game more for the story and uh, not so much for passionate love or whatever. Now who would I recommend and not recommend the game to? So I would personally recommend it to those who like a good fairy story. As I said, I would very much describe the overall story as kind of like a fairy tale because it's all about this main character that it's kind of cursed you could say it's a curse because you know you don't want to live a life where you're like anything you touch burns you know um so it's very much like main character has a curse and then she goes through ups and downs and then whatever type of thing so if you if you like that sort of story then um great um secondly if you like lots of distinct characters i would definitely recommend this game because each character has a very distinct like history and character development um 
you know, it's not like you've got a bunch of Kudere or a bunch of Yandere characters, it's very much different character tropes. Um, so if you would like that sort of thing and you would rather have different types rather than the same old same old then I definitely recommend it because yeah each they were very different and I got to experience many different things uh, playing each route and of course they all kind of came together and Arsene Lupin really just put it put the roots all together strung it together and um just everything, yeah, it, it was really good. I liked each route. There were no routes where I was like, I'm really bored, I hate this right now. <laughs> um, so, definitely. Thirdly, if you like, I guess, a Western theme, so it's very, obviously, it's based in London, it's based in England, it's based in, it's got like a steampunk feel, so it's a Western type game. So, you, you if you want to experience, you know, like, the West, um, and like kind of that sort of thing then I would definitely recommend it because it's one of those games where um, it's it's really good for that sort of thing and fourthly if you're not looking for something too romancy well I say that see there is romance it's just okay if you want like if you don't mind there not being that much like post couple stories then this you should like be quite happy like you'd be okay with it because um you do see them the two grow together as a couple and like you know one or the other really likes the other and and it's still sweet it's just you know it's not like incredibly passionate but if you're not looking for that if you want something that's cuddly and sweet um then yeah i think code real life is great oh oh and more importantly than any of the others it's great for beginners in my opinion, someone who has not played an otome game, I think this is a great way to get into the whole otome game th thing. And um, the reason why I say this is because there's obviously a good ending where, you know, the main character and the love interest lives happily ever after, great. But every otome game also has like a bad ending, but the bad ending for this is kind of a good way to get used to bad endings because obviously something bad happens because it's a bad ending, but I like the fact that the main character moves on so this bad thing happens but she kind of goes I've got to accept this I've got to you know understand that this thing has happened and I'm gonna move on I'm gonna be happy because I want to be happy for myself and my love interest um, wants to be happy or whatever would want me to be happy depending on what happens to the ally or the people around them and none of the endings were like extreme uh, they were obviously emotional but I think it's a good for a beginner because it's emotional. It's not just a happy bad ending, it's emotional. But seeing the main character afterwards move on, or at least try to move on with her life, or whatever the situation, um, means that you're not left just feeling really crap. Because there are some endings where I have kind of been left like that happen, like that happened <laughs> and then they leave it there and you're like oh my gosh i can't i can't deal with this because i'm just feeling a bit depressed about what's happened but in code realize it gives you a chance to sort of feel a bit happy um or neutral in the end so if you're scared of bad endings like i used to be because <laughs> i used to avoid all bad endings but now i actually like some bad endings um but if you're like that where you're avoiding bad endings or you want to get into enjoying bad endings then this is a really good game for it because i felt like the bad endings were fairly mild i mean some of you may disagree in which case obviously comment your opinion so that everyone else can see why you disagree but um that's my opinion on it so i would not recommend it to those who are looking for historical accuracy i will never forget the moment i saw queen victoria i was expecting Queen Victoria, uh, what I got was, she's <laughs> thank you, Rose, she's Queen Victoria, but she was definitely not Queen <laughs> Victoria. <laughs> she was one sexy lady. And don't get me wrong, I loved her as a character. She was your stereotypical, like, confident, independent woman. Sort of someone that I really respect and look up to. So she was a great character, but if you're if you're imagining like actual Victorian London with Queen Victoria and all the people looking like what you would expect back in historical like Victorian London, then you may not want to play this game because you will be disappointed. 
if you don't care about that, if you're happy with a game where it's just based in England and you know you see a few buildings from London, that sort of thing, then I think this is a great game because it's 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 pretty. It's pretty, you know. But if you're looking for accuracy and if the accuracy is wrong, it's gonna really bug you, then I would not play this game. <laughs> Secondly, and this was for me, I think this is the biggest con of the game for me, was that the romance, it's there but it was lacking um, in the sense that I wanted a little bit more like kissing or like more, um, you know, something a bit more passionate, which I did not expect obviously because, you know, the main character is poisonous, why would she, like, she can't touch anyone, so, you know, I wasn't expecting there to be passionate romance, but if you were looking for a game, uh, where there's gonna be like more passion and romance, especially after the couple gets together, then I would not go with this game because this game is very fluffy in the romance kind of way. It's very sweet. I think it's, um, what age rating was it in Japan? I think the age rating was 12 years and under? It could have been 15, I can't remember. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's the kind of romance that's friendly for people who don't really want that passionate, crazy romance like you would get in Pure Fjorda. So if you're looking for a game like Pure Fjorda, where it's like crazy, dramatic, blood everywhere, then this wouldn't really be the game for you. So that's that. And uh, I'm trying to think of all the like bad things about it, but it's quite a good game, so I can't really think of anything um oh yeah if you're looking for a game that's more like based in japan or or you know if you're not looking for something that's based in the west then i would give this a miss because the whole concept like everything is based in england london type of thing oh there's a, there's a little bit of wales maybe i can't remember but it's it's everything's based in the uk so um and, and the way they're dressing and like the way they speak and the food they're eating, it's all Western. So if you're looking for like an Eastern Japanese-y kind of like game, then I would not go for this. So those are the three sort of things that I would, sort of three kind of things that I would not like, is kind of like bad or whatever. Um, but all in all, I really enjoy this game. Uh, the rating I would give it is probably about maybe a 3.5 out of 5. Um, the reason why I'm giving it a 3.5, and this is my personal opinion, I feel like a lot of people would give it a 5, uh, but the reason why I am giving it a 3.5 is because of the romance uh, aspect. I wanted a little bit more there, and uh, I also felt like the characters were a little bit too distinct, maybe? As in, like, you know, you've got these uh, fictional character characters based on other books and like stories and you've kind of mushed them together I think that's great but for me it kind of gave a little bit of a, a cluttery feeling um, but I really enjoyed the story I really really enjoyed Cardia as a main character she really develops well she starts off being like this doll like person and then gradually turns more human because of the interactions she has with the uh, love interests and oh, Victor, Victor's so cute. Just, he, he made everything better. <laughs> he was just the cutest character ever. And as I said, normally I don't go for the cute characters, but he's an exception. Um, that little noise he makes right at the beginning, and if any of you play it, you will know what I'm talking about. Um, that was the moment I thought he's a cute character and that he would be my favorite. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, 3.5, however, there are two fan discs, uh, one's called Future Blessings, the other I think is coming out soon for the Switch, it's called Winter Tide Miracles I think? Um, but I think once I play those fan discs my score will probably get boost up, boosted up to like a 4.5 because then I'll finally get to see um, the characters interact as a couple and see how their love grows and I think I'll really find that fun so um if you were to take the FDs into consideration the score will probably go up to 4.5 plus you get to I've heard romance Herlock Sholmes in the fan disc and he's a very cute attractive maybe not cute handsome more like a handsome attractive gentlemanly character 
And I, when I was playing, I was kind of sitting there going, oh, I wish I could have chosen him as a love interest because he's so cool. <laughs> um, I've heard you can play that of him in the fan disc as well. Uh, so, yeah, I think, I think, you know, once I've laid the fan disc, the score will definitely increase. But all in all, I would really suggest, I would really recommend this game, especially to those who have never played in Tommy before, um, because... Yeah, it's just, it's really solid. I can see why there's such a big fan base and why so many people love this game. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this review and it will be helpful in you deciding whether to buy this game or not. Uh, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and would like more like this. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in another one of my videos. Bye!